The last thing uh, I'll bring I'll bring up is uh, I know there's a lot of conversation and talk about uh, what happened with the uh, with the uh, the demo one uh, capsule. I know Hans is going to talk about that as well. But uh, uh, from a NASA perspective, we have worked very closely with the SpaceX team. Um, our first our goal when this incident happened was to try to find out from a station program perspective, do we have any issues with this particular Dragon? And uh, very quickly, um, we, we, uh, we partnered well with the SpaceX team. They, uh, uh, they were thinking the very same thing, and so we were able to, to get our arms around uh, the common areas that we had to look at, that they had to look at. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, we didn't see any change in, in our overall measurable risk in going into the mission as a result of that. And so uh, anyway, I just wanted to get that out there now. Again, I know there's a lot of conversation about it, but we looked very hard from a space station program uh, at, uh, at what, what that particular issue meant for us. I know um, all our friends in the commercial crew program, uh, obviously they're very interested in what's, what happened with that particular incident. And they're, they're also very closely aligned with the SpaceX team and, and their investigation. And, and that's gonna continue, continue to go on for some time. And, and that's uh, what we'll let, uh, let our commercial crew program, program go work with SpaceX and try to figure out their, their path forward. But we feel very comfortable in moving for, forward with this particular mission. So um, with that I'll pass it on to Hans. <clears throat> All right. Um, thank you very much, and uh, good morning. I'm uh, happy to be back in Florida for another launch. I do want to start today with a, um, a, uh, by addressing the test anomaly that occurred on April 21st uh, this year. And um, please keep in mind, this is still very early in the investigation. Uh, the investigation is led by both SpaceX and NASA. Both teams are carefully uh, reviewing the telemetry data and um, all the data that was collected during that test, high-speed imagery, uh, telemetry, and it will include eventually the analysis of the recovered hardware from the test. Uh, priority at this moment is to allow the teams to uh, conduct their analysis before we come to any conclusions. Um, that said, uh, here's what we can confirm at this point in time. Uh, at the test stand, we powered up Dragon, and it uh, powered up as, uh, as expected. We completed tests with the uh, Draco thrusters. The Draco thrusters are the smaller thrusters that are also on, uh, on Dragon 1 and uh, the Cargo Dragon. Um, we fired them in two sets for each, each for five seconds, and that went very well. And then just prior, before we wanted to fire the Super Draco, um, there was an anomaly, and the vehicle was destroyed. Uh, there were no injuries. Uh, SpaceX had uh, taken all safety measures. Um, in prior to this test, as we always do. Um, and because this is a ground test, we have a, a high amount of data, a huge amount of data from the vehicle and the ground sensors. But it is too early to confirm any, any cause, whether probable or root. Um, but um, the, the, the initial data uh, indicates that the anomaly occurred during the activation of the Super Draco system. Uh, that said, we're looking at all possible issues, and the investigation is ongoing. Uh, we have no reason to believe that there's an issue with the Super Draco themselves. Uh, those have been through about 600 tests um, at our test facility in Texas, and you also know about the paddleboard. We did some hover tests, so there was a lot of testing going on on the Super Draco. We continue to have high confidence in that uh, particular thruster. And um, as you mentioned already, uh, as Crew Dragon is built upon the heritage of Cargo Dragon, but these are different spacecraft. Um, Dragon does not use Super Draco and its propellant systems. Uh, we have looked at all the common links between the two spacecraft. Uh, we had viewed that and we approved um, for flight. We, we approved them for flight by both teams, NASA and SpaceX, in common. Um, I also want to point out CR-17, that spacecraft has flown a CRS-12 already, uh, which means it has been tested very well, like flight, basically. Um, yeah. Again, I'd like to reiterate, the anomaly occurred during a test, not during a flight. Um, that is why we test. If this has to happen, um, I'd rather it happens on the ground um, in the development program and uh, I believe what we learned from this test will make us uh, basically a better company and, the, uh, and, and, and Dragon 2, at the end, a better vehicle, a safer vehicle. And uh, so we will take the lessons learned from this and uh, 
I'm convinced this will help us to ensure that Crew Dragon is the uh, one of the safest human spaceflight vehicles ever built.